We have got to continue this fight because people like me are benefiting from that tremendous research. I was on a clinical trial eight years ago for uh, the HER2 new gene for the drug Herceptin, and I'm living proof that it helped. The government could do no better with its money than to continue, to continue to invest in cancer research and biomedical research overall. Good evening. There's news tonight in the war on cancer. A landmark report says that there has been remarkable progress on some cancers, but nearly no improvement in others. The report by the American Association for Cancer Research is a milestone, 40 years after the Nixon administration declared a national campaign against the disease. The biggest advance has been the understanding that all cancers are not the same, and each one has to be treated differently. Cancer is probably 200 diseases, not one disease. And we can cure cancer. We just can't cure all cancer. Well, thanks, everyone, for being here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. I'm Scott Goldberg. You are the panelists who helped produce this 2011 Cancer Progress Report for AACR. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say about it. And Dr. Garber, I'd like to start with you. Can you? Tell us what the goal of the AACR Cancer Progress Report 2011 is and what you hope it will accomplish. We have taken this opportunity to inform the world about the remarkable progress that's been made against cancer in the last 40 years. Dr. Fodi, what is AACR's role in helping make all of this possible? We need to get to uh, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle and it basically ensure that this important research gets funded at a proper level. Congress uh, gives $5.1 billion to the cancer budget, uh, but this is insufficient because technology is very expensive, uh, translational research is very expensive, and we need desperately to translate these wonderful fundamental discoveries for the benefit of patients now. The technology that we've generated in the past 40 years is just phenomenal. Monoclonal antibodies, DNA sequencing, microscopic and macroscopic imaging. The Cancer Genome Atlas really brought together hundreds of investigators who are still working uh, every single day. Their goal is to sequence all of the cancer genes, actually, in all of the cancers. When this project is done, you will have the highest quality data sets on all the genomic changes in the history of science. Dr. Dalton, in your own words, can you describe what personalized medicine is? Personalized medicine, uh, first and foremost, is uh, an effort to recognize the need of patients. What we want to do is be able to study that patient's tumor, understand the nuance of that tumor, and under, in other words, what makes that tumor unique, that we could create a therapy that's tailor-made, for the patient and hopefully cure the patient. And if we give the right treatment the first time, I guarantee you we will make medicine more affordable. What sort of economic impact does it have, Dr. Garber? Economically, uh, funding cancer research is good business because it brings more money in locally, it allows more businesses to develop, it allows more innovation. It's hard to see in an economy like ours that this is not a big driver. It's an era where we have to make tough choices, and if we don't make a choice, a smart choice at this point in cancer research, I think there's every chance we will lose momentum, and that is a, a future where personalized medicine, medicine can be delivered to every patient will be lost, and that would be immeasurably lost. It really is clear that research pays dividends not only in, um, in uh, helping the lives of, of uh, patients, but you know, relieving a great deal of suffering overall. As a member of a family that has five generations of women who've been affected by cancer, I've seen the incredible progress that we've made in cancer treatment, cancer diagnosis. And my, what excites me is that with the progress we've made in research, the sixth generation of my family may not even have to face 
cancer. To roll back the clock at this point is to make a mockery of all of the tremendous work that has been done by these incredible scientists, these incredible researchers, and the patients who have endured going through getting us to this point. I don't want to make cancer a chronic disease. I want to either prevent it or cure it. It's possible. We've done it. We should not recognize chronicity as something where you continue to live with cancer when we can get rid of it and cure it. It's not a dream anymore that using all the smart new ways we understand uh, that we can attack cancer, that this is going to be something that's a curable disease. As a patient, uh, one of the most powerful motivators is hope, uh, specifically hope that new treatments will come down the line in time to help you. Um, and I think we now have more and more really valid reasons to hope. I can't imagine a better time to actually be excited about what's possible. It's all possible. I don't see how anyone can fail to be optimistic at this point. Well, I'd like to thank all of you for your time and for your very thoughtful answers today and wish you the very best in the future. Thank you. Thank you.